Humans have long held a fascination for the human brain. We chart it, we've described it, we've drawn it, we've mapped it. Now, just like the physical maps of our world that have been highly influenced by technology, think Google Maps, think uh, GPS, the same thing is happening for brain mapping, true transformation. So let's take a look at the brain. Most people, when they first look at a, a fresh human brain, they say it doesn't look like what you're typically looking at when someone shows you a brain. Typically what you're looking at is a fixed brain, it's gray, and this outer layer, this is the vasculature, uh, which is incredible around the human brain. This is the blood vessels. 20% of the oxygen coming from your lungs, 20% of the blood pumped from your heart is servicing this one organ. That's basically, if you hold two fifths together, it's just slightly larger than the two fifths. Scientists, sort of in the end of the 20th century, learned that they could track blood flow to map uh, non-invasively where activity was going on in the human brain. So, for example, they can see in the back part of the brain, which is just turning around there, there's the cerebellum. That's keeping you upright right now. It's keeping me standing. It's involved in coordinated movement. On the side here, this is the temporal cortex. This is the area where primary auditory processing, so you're hearing my words, you're sending it up into higher language processing centers. Towards the front of the brain is the place in which all of the just sort of more complex thought decision-making is the last to mature, sort of a late adulthood. This is where all your decisions making processes are going on. It's the place where you're deciding right now you probably aren't going to order the steak for dinner. Instead of recording the activity of neurons, we need to control it. It's not essential that we can control the activity of all neurons in the brain, just some. The more targeted our interventions, the better. And our if we could record the activity of all neurons, we would understand the brain. But think for a moment what that means. Even if we could measure what every cell is doing at all times, we would still have to make sense of the recorded activity patterns. And that's so difficult, chances are we'll understand these patterns just as little as the brains that produce them. Take a look at what brain activity might look like. In this simulation, each black dot is one nerve cell. The dot is visible whenever the cell fires an electrical impulse. There's 10,000 neurons here. So you're looking at roughly 1% of the brain of a cockroach. Your brains are about a hundred million times more complicated. Somewhere in a pattern like this is you. Your perceptions, your emotions, your memories, your plans for the future. But we don't know where since we don't know how to read the pattern. We don't understand the code used by the brain. To make progress, we need to break the code. keeps it alive. Without decisions, you cannot see, you cannot think, you cannot feel. 
And you may think that anesthetics work by sending you into some deep sleep or by blocking your receptors so that you don't feel pain. But in fact, most anesthetics don't work that way. What they do is they introduce a noise into the brain so that the neurons cannot con understand each other. They're confused and you cannot make a decision. So while you're trying to make up your mind what the doctor, the surgeon is doing while he's hacking away at your body, he's long gone. He's at home having tea. So let's take a deeper look. Let's look at neurons. So as I mentioned, there are 86 billion neurons. There are also these smaller cells, as you'll see. These are support cells, astrocytes, glia. And the nerves themselves are the ones who are receiving input. They're storing it. They're processing it. Each neuron is connected via synapses to up to 10,000 other neurons in your brain. And each neuron itself is largely unique. The unique character of both individual neurons and neurons within a collection of the brain are driven by fundamental properties of their underlying biochemistry. These are proteins. They're proteins that are controlling things like ion channel movement. They're controlling who nervous system cells partner up with. And they're controlling basically everything that the nervous system has to do. So